If there was a book that included every con, I did it, except the ones that involved violence or sneaky, rob, trick, forge, embezzle. I did them all. If I snuck and got caught at 1 a.m. in bank's deposit vault while wearing a black suit with lots of pockets in it, could be considered suspicious. So why do it? With careful planning, the right suit, the right the right it papers, and above all, the right charm and people's skills, I could walk into the place at midday and the manager would hold the door open for me when I left. Exploiting the greedy was my way of living. How the heck had Lord Vetinari know my name wasn't Mr. Spanglet or Mr. Lipvick? He had cracked me like an egg. I asked if you have any last words, Mr. Spangler. It's customary. I wonder if you might have thought of any. I wasn't actually expecting him to die. Um, good one, sir. I think we'll go with that one. I see you're awake at the present time. <laughs> oh, yes, you are hanged. Hanged within half an inch of your life. That was when Alfred Spangler died. I am offering you a job, Mr. Litvig. Alfred Spangler is buried, but Mr. Litvig has a future. It may be short, of course, if he is stupid. You're going to work for wages. I realize the concept may be unfamiliar. Only as a form of heck! The job is that of the general postmaster of the Ankh-Morpork post office. May I just add that if you want to leave this interview, you only have to step through that door and never hear from me again. Look, I don't know anything about delivering the post. This morning, you had no experience at all of being dead. And yet, but for my intervention, you would have nevertheless had tur turned out to be extremely good at it. It just goes to show, you never know until you try. Okay. Are you accepting my offer, Mr. Litvig? Excuse me, I'd like to check something. You're saying I can choose to become your postmaster or receive certain death? A choice, nevertheless. You see, I believe in freedom. Not many, not many people do, but no practical definition of freedom would be completely without the freedom to take consequences. Now, will you take the job? All right, of course. I accept this natural-born criminal, habitual liar, fraudster, and totally untrustworthy perverted genius. Excellent! I pride myself on being able to choose the right man. Sign here, please, Postmaster General. Certainly. Your correct name, if you please. What name did you sign? Er, Ethel Snake, my lord, as far as I can make out. Do, do try to concentrate, Mr. Litvig. Your parole officer will meet you in ten minutes outside the post office building. Parole officer? I'm not stupid. Now off you go, Postmaster General. Do you think you'll turn up there, Lord? But I've already taken care of that. One must consider the psychology of the individual. That is what I do all the time. And lamentably, drum not, you do not always do. That is why he has walked off with your pencil. I'm your pro officer, Mr. Litwig. My name is Mr. A Gotham? A Gotham? When was this place last open? 20 years ago. Postmaster. Who said that? Uh, Grout, sir. Junior Postman Grout. Junior Postman? And this is Apprentice Postman Stanley. And that's Mr. Tiddles. He's the Postmaster Cat. You'll get used to him. The carelessly placed beer bottle has impeded him not. He has passed the water. Other men may choose to remain in darkness, but the Postman loves the light. Er, I, I can't see that in the book. Was it supposed to say that? Well, he has been appointed by Lord Vetinari, and he has walked the postman's walk, so, uh... Welcome, oh, postmaster. Didn't Thomas do you hot?
Reach your guilt to the grand drum kills people, Mr. Lipsy. You must be getting on Reach your guilt's nerves. You're the one reminding what a mess the clocks are. You're the wasp at their picnic. I like that. Mr. Lipsy is a nuisance. has been reborn with these. Little pictures of Lord and Lord's backside. Stamps, Mr. Chris Block. 